My um, main observation is that they should rename it because yeah. ozone is technically bad for blue sky. But the layer, no, no the la no, ozone layer is good. good. Oh, we the hole in the ozone is bad. For yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the so we got rid of the ozone. hole. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did, didn't yeah, we? We're, we're, yeah, we did. We we're, fully got rid of yeah, the hole. Yeah, we healed it. We yeah. fully healed it. When did we do, do that? Do whatever you want. Because burn every, those leaves in your backyard. Whoa. Because everything that was causing the hole was like the aerosol spray cans in the in the hairspray. That okay, was, so we just hope that no more hole develops in the ozone. Um, no, we're just like not doing yeah. that, that stuff. Yo, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. This week, in this episode, we've got a bunch of stuff. We have Red being acquired by Nikon. Nikon? Nikon is actually how it's said. Theoretically, anyway. Uh, Cybertruck resellers being punished by Tesla. TikTok competing with Instagram. Spotify adding another feature we're not too sure about. And uh, a whole bunch of other random stuff probably in between. But first... But first, I, I want to show you something. Okay. Both mm. of you. Mm. And yes, it's a keyboard. Mm. <laughs> Fair uh, warning. Uh, okay. But Should I built this keyboard last night. Oh. It was specialty made for the studio. So oh this is God, a one of case. one. I have the case. I'm going to hand it to you. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's in a, Jesus. <laughs> it's a little heavy. heavy. It's uh, it's in a, yeah, it's in a really nice case. Well, this is not the case for it, but oh, I just oh. put it in there for the effect. It's just a lame other case, I guess. Well, it's for another cool keyboard, but this was specialty made for a... Uh, oh, jeez. Ooh. Oh. God, keyboards are so... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a keyboard Whoa. from a company called Geist Machine, and they make this really wild, super heavy, beautiful German-made keyboard oh. and they're oh, fans of the channel and they made a matte black version is this with, turn? Oh, yep that's cool with an incredible set of keycaps that are red and oh, black wow. and with our red keycap on the escape key. that is super cool i think looks beautiful well let me just put it down real quick while you're doing that <laughs> can we settle something right now a dispute that ellis and i have been having for weeks what do you want knobs on your keyboard? Yes, no. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. Yes or no? Yeah. Well, isn't Ellis's argument yeah. knob versus like rotary dial or something like that? Yeah, my, uh, my argument is that yeah. people think they want knobs. They like live in this fantasy I want world knobs. where they want knobs, but actually they don't use their knobs. I use my volume knob all the time. The volume knob is like maybe one of the few acceptable answers. But when people are like, "Yeah, I want some like, I want some knobs on my desk so I can like map to my go-to parameters." And Photoshop, maybe brush size, maybe, but all yeah. that stuff. Look, if you really want rotary encoding, get a jog wheel. If you want, jog wheel. if you like want to wheels. control a parameter, get a fader, and get get out of my face. Frankly, <laughs> that sounds nice. Does it feel nice? ASMR. It feels really nice, right? When it's, I was when I was on the mechanical keyboards in 2013, none of this stuff existed. It is in the like not companies. You're too early, David. It's the there ultra hobbyist. This is art at this point. Yeah, like, there were not all these companies that were making these like steel keyboards that just did not exist. I just want you to hold I, this. I, yeah, David needs to see this. I'm scared. It is. Oh boy. It is 60. Oh. percent So you probably wouldn't actually use it because you don't have 60%. function keys. Yeah. Oh my. God. But this is custom. It's all custom matte black. It's usually like a silver and a copper, this like is, rose gold color. This is straight copper. <laughs> and they painted it. And then it has this cool see through. They made us custom red gaskets for it. And then oh, this no. keycap set is wild. We're Apparently, looking at GMK the website sent now. And yeah, is, I'm worried you're going to tell me the gorgeous. price is like. Oh, it's like 800 plus. No way. For the regular version. And what? not including keycaps or stabilizers <laughs> or cap. switches. Yeah. No. Is, Wait, but just for the body? It. Yeah. What? <laughs> you get a keyless keyboard for eight hundred dollars? Not just keyless. No switches. No stabilizers. It's a piece of metal. When you guys are typing <laughs> tests, something beautiful. like trying out Dude, a keyboard, what beautiful. do you type? Um, Andrew Manganelli is the best. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. I usually type the alphabet <laughs> or like something. Oh, Andrew really? Manganelli yeah. is the best in the world, and then I just start like riffing off that, which usually just means like, and he is so cool, and <laughs> this keyboard is pretty awesome, or this keyboard sucks. I start so typing vain. like this I am awesome. typing so fast right now. I start <laughs> typing about how I'm typing. I always write or I type the cat is so very meow. Is what I always type. That's good. Type it right now. I usually say this is very cool over and over again. Now rate your typing experience of the cat is very meow, one out of ten. Very high. The main thing with these mechanical keyboards I is... I want a number, David. 
Need a review. <laughs> seven point. Ooh. Seven point eight. There it is. Tough critic. Actually, maybe higher. Maybe eight point one. This is every hobby, by the way. Where, oh, yeah. where someone goes, isn't it gorgeous? By the way, it's seven times as much as the, the normal <laughs> this, one. I mean, like, but it's not what? even okay. My main thing is that these cases are always so tall that unless I have a a wrist rest, true, it is always. I'm not. I don't like typing with my fingers like this. People I, do I, like, I like wrist rest. That. He did send. There's another version of this that has an adjustable bracket on the back, so you don't use this wheel and mm. you use it so it will change the typing angle, but it is taller. So. I love the angle. I just want okay. I just a want wrist, a wrist rest. rest to be able to make it. You want flat. a solid copper wrist rest. <laughs> That's also seven pounds. Jeez. Yes. Um, you could eat caviar off of it. <laughs> or wait, you could not eat caviar off of it. Which one is the caviar? You could hurt someone. Oh, I don't know. This wheel is epic though. It's really nice. I, I, I agree with you though. It is like I compare the keyboard space to like the sneaker space a lot. It's similar. It's like the sneaker space. You can compare it to sports hobbies. You can compare it to cars hobbies where you get past a certain point and it's theoretically actually worse for the everyday person, but you like appreciate things about it that other people and haven't. The, and there's like understood. rarities of some that were like yeah. this. I don't believe there's many people in the company making this. They're from Germany and they're like doing an incredible job at making these like as high quality as possible. You're so describing like, a Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> or or like a pair of Jordans that have like a certain type of leather or collabed with Travis Scott or whatever, to something extent, like that. Yeah. Like it is the same Jordan, but you're paying seven times the price for it. Oh my yeah. gosh, this is heavy. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to. Sorry, I didn't want to. No, it's totally solid. sidetrack this, but I wanted to show it. I built it last night. It was super fun to build, and it is a beautiful. You're trying to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on. Speaking of speaking of things that are extraordinarily high quality. Red, we use red cameras, mm -hmm. nice, uh, and a lot of things that we do, especially on the MKBHD channel. Yeah, uh, out of nowhere, well, somewhere. Uh, well, yeah, out of somewhere, <laughs> uh, but kind of out of nowhere. Red gets acquired by Nikon. 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 I'm just gonna keep saying it both ways every time because Nikon. people say both. Can't upset anyone that way. Yeah, <laughs> what could go wrong? No, uh, so. I've never used a Nikon camera. I've actually that's not true. I've used a couple, but I've never shot mainly on any channel with Nikon. We I, I always used to rag on Austin Evans because he shot on Nikon cameras mm -hmm. for a while. We go to CES and he'd be the only one using a Nikon camera. Mm -hmm. And you all picked like, on him. Yeah, <laughs> we're like you're still using it. What is this camera? Why are you using this one? And he loved it. And he was familiar with it, and it was great. But like he eventually switched, and there's just not that many Nikon video cameras out there. So to an extent, I see why Nikon is getting into the high-end cinematography space with RED. Yeah. But there is also some history to oh, Nikon and there? RED, there isn't really, there? There is. You want to get into that? Sure. Yeah. So there was a lawsuit that has been going on since 2022. In my opinion, one of the stupidest lawsuits of all time. It's like a petty lawsuit. Yeah. yeah. Dumber than, no, the McDonald's hot coffee. I sidetracked that. No, that's Don't real. Even, that's that real, that's real. legit. Just kidding. Just keep going. Yeah, this so, one's yeah. closer to real. Yeah. Sure. So for a very long period of time, people have been trying to shoot compressed internal RAW on their cameras, which basically means like if you took a RAW photo versus a JPEG, it's it's compressing it slightly, but it's still RAW. So it's it's storing a ton of dynamic range and all this information, color information. So it's super flexible in post. Now, normally when you shoot video, you have the option of like, uh, H.264, H.265, which are compression algorithms, which basically take intra-frame compression. It's this whole thing. But over time, uh, a lot of com uh, camera companies have been trying to figure out ways to basically like up the quality of their video. So apparently, RAW has had a patent on compressed internal RAW video. Nikon's had a patent on it. Red. Or Red. Red had. Yeah, yeah. You said RAW had. Red hat. Red hat. Red hat. Okay. <laughs> red hat raw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Red patented compressed raw internal, internal recording. Okay. Yes. So that no other video camera yeah. could do compressed internal raw recording. Yeah. And I remember this because I remember when the Nikon Z7 and Z6 came out, or Z9. Yeah. Z7 and Z6 came out like a number of years ago. They didn't have it, but if you used an Atomos Ninja, yeah. which is like this external monitor that is mm -hmm. also a recorder that goes on top of your camera, oh. you could record raw. raw. Yeah. And so I was always like, I wonder why they're doing that. Like it must be a, a buffer speed thing or something like that. 
Turns out it was just because of this lawsuit. Yeah. So when the Z9 came out, which is Nikon's like highest end, super fast camera that doesn't even have a um, a shutter, I think it's just like all just like reading. Yeah, <laughs> it's the noise it makes. <laughs> reading, Wait, do you, reading. Do you remember that Sony camera with the like boost button, and we found yeah, out yeah. it had artificial sound? Now that's oh, I'm imagining. It just you hold yeah. the Sony and just goes reading. reading. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so the Z9 came out uh, in 2022, I think, and it it had internal compressed RAW built in, oh. and Nikon was just like, yeah, we think that that is a stupid patent that should never even have been granted, mm. and I think at this point they were just like. We are going to like take this on, and if you sue us, then maybe we can get your patent removed because it's stupid in general. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. Like, I think you should not be able to patent something like that because mm -hmm. then you're just controlling the entire camera. It's market. Too broad. It also feels, and maybe you can explain this better, but there's already raw photos which yeah. does not have a patent. Correct. On it, I presume. Yeah. So, like, all you're doing is taking the new version of. It's just doing raw on something else. So yeah. So I guess what could. Is their patent? It's on that? the idea of compressed raw. Yeah, compressed specifically. So you could Com do uh, because r uncompressed raw is gigantic and ridiculous anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. But comp they had all these compression ratios, and so I'm sure they wanted to s just patent that. But they ended up patenting something so broad that it just applied to all compressed raw. Yeah. Okay. So we used to shoot like remember the ratios would be like five to one or ten yeah, to yeah, one yeah. or twenty two to one. Now they've simplified it to just LQ, MQ, HQ. Okay. Those are the compression ratios of how lossy is the raw. It's kind of a weird way of saying it. So yeah. they essentially just tried to compress their compression, or sorry. They applied a their compression. Pat into their compression, but it just covered ro compressed raw completely, which is, super which is dumb. dumb, okay. in my opinion. That makes yes. sense. But it wasn't just like Red's like, we did it first, no one else gets also, to do it at com all. Also, compressed raw is a little bit of an oxymoron. It sounds like it. Because yeah. the whole point of raw, but I assume what they're doing is like, uh, in raw photos at least, if you have completely uncompressed raw, it's taking like everything that the sensor is capturing, most of which our human eyes cannot even perceive. It's like mm -hmm. frequencies of light that we can't even see. Like it, all this like redundant information. So compressed raw is pretty much like the HQ in red is like everything up to the stuff that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Okay. So it's still huge amounts of data, except a for a little bit of stuff. So is it just a different codec, basically? Codec? Or not codec, like format? What, like how when raw? you would compress a picture, a raw photo to like a JPEG. Uh -huh. They're compressing a raw video into whatever they made that's their red thing. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they tried to patent. Yeah, but yeah, they patented, they patented the, whole the idea. The whole idea. It's like if yeah. you patented, like if you had a special fishing rod that had a certain mechanism to catch more fish, and then you just patented good fishing rod. It's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, you I, did have a cool idea there, but like that's too broad. And now yeah. anyone yeah. else who has that a similar but slightly different good yeah. idea can't use it. It sounds like they just took two things that were already things and when put them together and we're, they were like, we did this. They were the first people to Google search compressed raw, so no one yeah. had searched it and then tried to what patent What they it. should have been able to patent is the specific compression okay. algorithm that they were using for yeah, sure. red raw. Cool. Exactly. Okay. That's what they should have been granted a patent for. But for and our summer. 3Ds are dope, and I love them. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. is that specifically Red's fault, or is that just like the that's, patent that's office the patent not having any fault. idea? Okay. Uh, mm, I'm sh I think it's a I'm sure bit Red bad. wasn't upset about yeah, it, I, but... Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sure Red tried their luck. It's like when um, what was that YouTube group that like tried to patent the, <laughs> the idea? The re they tried to patent the word React. The re no, I think the that fine was a trademark. Bros. The fine, the fine bros, bros, fine bros, yeah. bros, trademark or patent? Oh, was yeah. I think they, tried, they tried to trademark yeah. reactions. Yeah, react. react. The word React, so that you couldn't make a YouTube video without paying them. Well, you couldn't make a video with like, you couldn't make a. They had this whole series that was reacting reacts. to. Yeah. yeah. So they wanted to just like own that. And they figured that the best way to do that was to make sure other YouTubers couldn't do it. And boy, yeah. did that go well. Yeah. That, that yeah. went super so, well. Sony tried to get the trademark on Let's Play like way back Ugh. in the day. Just not That's good. So dumb. Don't do that, guys. So, yeah. So, okay. So, back to the story. So, Red was suing Nikon in 2022 over... Oh, sorry. Nikon was suing Red in 2022 over this really stupid patent. And then randomly in April of 2023, last year... I remember this happening randomly they just dropped the lawsuit hmm. and they didn't disclose why they dropped the lawsuit so yesterday when i was doing research on this i was reading a bunch of articles from when they dropped the lawsuit and everyone was like 
yeah, they probably settled some like internal thing that like they came to some agreement. Well, they did. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So then this re- news comes out of nowhere on, I think, Monday morning that Nikon had just. No, this was Thursday because we had oh, finished Thursday. editing the right. podcast and everyone was expecting it last right. week. But you yes. were already mm-hmm. in Japan and Thursday. we had. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that Nikon has just acquired Red, which seems insane to me because Nikon, theoretically, everyone has kind of been like Nikon's on their deathbed for like years. Yeah. Because the Z6 and Z7 and Z8 and Z9, as good of cameras as they are, they're just not very popular. Mm -hmm. Um, And almost every camera manufacturer actually doesn't make most of their money from their like consumer cameras, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Like Fujifilm makes almost all of its money from medical devices. And then of their of their consumer cameras, like eighty percent of their margin is in stacks, which is the like little instant film, oh. film cameras. Wow! So they make almost no money from actual consumer digital cameras, and I assume Nikon is similar. Um, but I don't know specifically what categories Nikon makes all their money. Either way, it seems pretty crazy because Red is like a very well known camera company in the industry. But they're also super niche as well. Like I'm assuming their yeah. sales numbers. I don't know what yeah. their profit margins are, but like. Neither of those seem like companies that are selling. Red is the underdog in the cinema industry. They have to like consistently kind of like showcase like these movies are shot on red. I promise these movies are shot on red. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever you I I always like that you can see like what cameras certain films or award winning movies are shot on. Yeah. And red sneaks in there like lots of Ari, lots of Canon. But there's a bunch that are shot on red. red. So they make it known. Yeah. And Red does have this reputation at this point. I think when people hear Red camera, they think, oh, expensive cinema camera, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. Red. Yeah. So, yeah, they're out there. I kind of, they strike me as like the well known, but like the lotus of of camera manufacturers. Like, you know who they are, but you realize they really don't actually sell that many cameras, even yeah. though they're used by a bunch of studios. Yeah. So I, I'm not shocked that Nikon has the money or whatever to acquire them. I'm just, I mean, they don't, they haven't detailed how much it was for or any of the terms or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Whenever, whenever I see something like this, I wonder what are they going to do now and now that they own it? Are they going to change a bunch of stuff? Are we going to have Nikon logos on the rest of the red cameras that come out from <laughs> here on out? Like what is happening? They're are they a gonna... subsidiary, so I don't think they're going to change anything. Yeah. Continue to operate like fully independently. I maybe? would guess that... <sighs> Possibly Nikon and or uh, Red probably was like, yeah, we're gonna lose this lawsuit and mm. we should just take a deal or something like that. Something that I've always noticed is if you go on like Red's shot on Red page, all the movies that have been shot on Red generally have like really really heavy color grading, like very very intense color grading. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that's just like there's a reason that people shoot in red because they want to be able to color grade like that but um, that's just something I always notice versus like Ari Ari is usually a lot a little more like subtle yeah yeah I I know that I shoot on red because the color science is so good it's so good it's It's so so stupidly good now some Nikons might have that (laughs) (laughs) honestly that would be nice that would be really nice if because we shoot Canon for a, a lot of the same reasons, like good color science, easy, yeah. good autofocus. Uh, if we had suddenly had a bunch of Nikon cameras that like had red level color science, I'd be pretty happy. The most annoying thing about Nikon is that their mount and their um, focus and zoom are, are all opposite. backwards yeah. from everyone else. Something about that strikes me also as lawsuit related. I think it's just petty. You think? <laughs> yeah, because like... <laughs> Every other camera manufacturer just does the same direction as as Canon. Like mounting lenses is always this, it's like slightly different for every mount. Like Canon is like twelve o'clock, yeah. three o'clock, yeah. and then like RF mount is three o'clock, five o'clock, or whatever. Yeah. And then Nikon is like a different direction. Yeah. It's just a, they're all slightly different. Is PL an open standard? I don't know because it's kind of just locking. I it feel in. like yeah, the, every, it well, must be open because it's not really a mount. Yeah, I don't know who would own it. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people yeah. make PL glass. So yeah. Anyway, I should have brought my Nikon. I did buy my first. Red camera. Um, and while I was in Japan, okay. I bought a Nikon F- FM2 titanium mm. because I love titanium. So Sick. anyway, is it film. Yeah, it's film. Of oh, course, it's of film. Course. Yeah, of course it's check. Of course it's film. Do yeah. you think they're gonna Duh. still be so against the patent now that they own it? Nope. I hope not. Because <laughs> Nikon was aggressively arguing that Red should have never even have been granted the patent. 
And so if they turned around, bought red, and then started enforcing it on other people, it would be the dumbest thing ever. That would be ever. hilarious. I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. That's the greatest business decision. Especially if you're, if you're just saying they, they're they not doing that great. That sounds like a great way to... That's like politics, where you like debate the person over and over, and then by the end, you're like, I endorse this person to be the president. That's, like, that's exactly how it goes. They're the but worst person I've shocked. ever met. They're yeah. terrible for democracy. But you need a vote for them. Yeah, vote for them now. Yeah, well, we'll see how red operates. I'm very curious. If we get better Nikon cameras, that's a win. If we get better red cameras somehow, that's also a win. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the, the red logo or anything is going to have Nikon on it, but I guess you would worry if... The biggest worry would be if red stuff starts declining in quality yeah. because, like, Nikon Margins starts taking over a little more. Yeah. Yeah. We, we love random tech takeovers, of course. Yeah. We're course. we're Nikon boys now. Yeah, we're Nikon boys now. Well, not in the pod. We're Canon boys in the pod. That's true. Nikon Speaking outside. of... Speaking of... I tried to stall that as long as I so could hard. for you to get that one. Speaking of random tech... Speaking of great colors... Blue Sky let its users pick their own oh, moderation red. filters. What do you mean? Oh, no, that's good. Red. Blue. Red. Oh, I was talking about color blue. science. Red. Oh, red oh. versus blue. Works either way. I like it them both. Shut down. It's like a double week. entendre. Wait, what shut down last week? Uh, what was it? Rooster was, teeth. Rooster teeth oh, got shut teeth. down by Warner Brothers, I think. Yeah, because they bought them. Warner Brothers Discovery. Get it right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which will soon be Paramount Warner Brothers Discovery Max. <laughs> Which yeah. will soon be. Warner Brothers, Paramount, Discovery, Max, Red, Nikon. Denny's. <laughs> Which will then be Netflix. Here at Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Here at Dr. Pepper. Okay. I, I get one good segue and y'all got to take <laughs> over. No, that was good. So uh, what happened to Blue Sky? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We almost had it. Uh, okay. So so Blue Sky just uh, opened up a new open source tool called Ozone that is allowing users to set their own moderation filters. Wait, is this a pun? The ozone thing, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, it is solid because it's a blue sky. That's the thing blue sky's ever done. That. You didn't notice that? No. Did blue sky change their logo yet? Yeah, they did. Okay. It's a butterfly. That now. app icon was so bad. I don't know why it's a butterfly now, though. That doesn't make any sense. It's still better than the just like photo of the clouds. I don't know. I liked that. I like that. It, lo- oh, it the photo did of not. The yeah, yeah, it at did not match inside of. Yeah, at least use a vector. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're letting users customize their own moderation filters with this open source tool. So effectively, you have this feed, this social media feed. Mm -hmm. And the biggest issue in social media consistently is how to do content moderation, right? Because X has now gone on this like direction of like, we're going to do less content moderation. So you just kind of get everything. You get people yelling at you. You get random uh, porn bots in your comments nonstop. But that's the way they want it to be. So that's the way it's going to be. And then can I jump in on X real quick? Sure. Do you guys get Liver King ads? Yes. No. I started getting I get ads yesterday. full on ads of just Liver King. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Promoting what? Himself. Or Liver King. Oh, himself. <laughs> it's no, wild. I haven't gotten that yeah. at all. Weird. Uh, sorry, that just seems like the state of <laughs> of Twitter ads right now is. I do get a lot porn of mobile games ads. or Liver King. Yeah. I do get all, it's I'll all get an ad and ads. I'm like, oh, that ad's kind of annoying. And then the next 700 times I open Twitter, that ad is in the <laughs> same place yeah. every time. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So so their approach is like less moderation, kind of just let let it go. Even though Linda Yaccarino would not say that's the case. That's the case. And then Threads which is run by Meta, Mm -hmm. is like, we don't want politics on threads. Mm -hmm. So they specifically downrank political content, which is very annoying for like journalists that use social media to Mm -hmm. get news, all of this stuff. And uh, they, you know, they are going to be federizing, which means that you're going to be able to have threads on other platforms. You could make like a, their API is going to be open. So you're theoretically going to be able to have your own app that runs its own social media content moderation. Mm -hmm. But Blue Sky is basically letting users create their own content moderation uh, platforms that other people can use. And it's sort of like Reddit, where you can have basically moderators that are able to go through a queue that users that are using that content moderation version can like report things that slip through the cracks. Hmm. And then you'll have people that can like, you know, do that. It's like a little more community focused. I am a little confused about this. Cause like, are they, like it's just letting a bunch of users, I guess, become a moderator and then moderate things. What's stopping that from enough of a group taking control of what they want to moderate? Or or you have to 
You get to join pick. theirs. You join a so moderation. So ultimately, it's completely unmoderated, and then the users moderate some blue things. Sky and you itself, can decide to go into that. Blue Sky itself, like Blue Sky Social, the main Blue Sky regular Blue Sky website, there they have their own content moderation team. Like Blue Sky yeah. has its own policies that moderate content in a okay. very specific way. And, and then, then this is adding on top of this that? is adding on top of that. Okay. Yeah. So it's like there's a there's a default level of content moderation. And then this is like additional content moderation if you want to do that. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. stacks on top. Yeah. Stacks on top. Stacks okay. on top. The yeah. main thing I was worried about there is that the base of this was totally unmoderated. Just completely <laughs> that sounds nothing. Terrible. Yeah, no, okay. that'd be that'd be worse. My um, main observation is that they should rename it. Because ozone is technically bad for blue sky. But the layer <laughs> no. no, the la no, ozone layer is good. good. Oh, we the hole in the ozone is bad for yeah, blue sky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the so we got rid of the hole. No, you didn't. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We're, yeah, we did. We fully got rid of yeah, the we healed, yeah, yeah, we yeah. fully healed it. When did we do Do that? whatever you want. Because Burn every, those leaves in your backyard. Whoa. Because everything that was causing the hole was like the aerosol spray cans in the in the hairspray. That okay, was, so we just hope that no more hole develops in the ozone. Um, no, we're just like not doing yeah. that, that stuff. We like full... This is back when we actually cared about climate change and we could make like meaningful changes fast. Uh, yeah. But I guess the analogy here is the hole in the ozone would be a hole in the moderation. <laughs> Yeah. So we hope that there. Well, the ozone layer is like a layer that protects the like harmful radiation from coming into Earth and warming the Earth. Exactly. So the ozone is a is is not a, the ozone's not the hole. It was a hole in the ozone layer. Right. The, the, yeah. the ozone itself is like a protective oh God, layer. I'm exposing my lack of science. I thought the atmosphere was keeping things in, and the hole was letting it out. No. No, the hole but was the opposite. Too radiation yeah. It was too much carbon dioxide buildup. No, no, the ozone's not about carbon. Yeah, it's separate. It's totally oh. separate. But what if we yeah. did put a hole in the ozone and then all the carbon could leak out and it would be okay? <laughs> oh, God. I, Neil deGrasse Tyson's watching Bring the stuff. aerosol yeah. back. God, make it stop. <laughs> I don't know enough okay. about climate no. change to okay. dispute you, so maybe we should. Raleigh! What? <laughs> <laughs> but what you were saying proves that the term ozone is perfect. It is. I, yes. It is. That is totally yes. fair. Yeah. All right, good call, Blue Sky. Ozone. Have a, <laughs> good name. Good a name. little bit of trivia that will quick trivia that will make it make more sense. Okay. Okay. Ozone is O three. You know how H two O. There's like two oxygens. Yep. Ozone has three oxygens. Gotcha. When you put it all together, it's a pale blue gas. Hmm. That's more confusing. Pale blue gas. <laughs> blue sky. Blue sky. Blue gas. So is there just a hmm. bunch of pale blue gas in the atmosphere that stops the radiation from warming the earth? And it, there's a cycle too, right? Like I believe that it loo it loses an oxygen and then it rebonds with the radiation and yeah. we need Raleigh back here. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna There I, is a cycle yeah. involved. I'm gonna preempt this that we are not scientists and please do not take Oh, that should yeah. be yeah, painfully should obvious ago, by right? now. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they knew. Yeah. Um, I thought I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a very interesting idea. Um, we were considering doing something around uh, all of these different protocols that are opening up for these social media platforms because I think ever since Twitter got purchased and turned into x mm -hmm. there's just been this rat race for like what's the next big social media platform gonna be and everyone's doing things a little differently like blue sky has the app protocol which is like if you own your own domain then your handle is just like at davidml.com is my handle and it can go everywhere whereas threads is trying to federize so that you can just like have one account on one website but then those posts will also show up on other websites and then X is just doing nothing. I mean, so yeah. X is just trying to burn slower than the other ones yeah. grow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is crazy because people. If you'd asked us like eight months ago, we all would have thought X would be dead by now. But it's still it's still significantly kicking. worse yeah. to be on. But it still just has the user base, which is why it's yeah, which is the thing that matters. Mm -hmm. I still don't know. I mean, they're still cash flow negative, so I don't really understand how they're still making any money, but or how they're still alive. Liver King ads. Liver King, he's funding them. <laughs> Anyway, I found the best new social media app recently. Oh, no. Best. Best one. Strava. None of, none of them can compete. Strava. It's called Bird Buddy. And uh, what you do is it pairs with a piece of hardware. You put this like oh, God. Uh, this this birdhouse with a webcam in it in your yard. And every time a bird comes and hangs out at your birdhouse, it like takes a picture of it. But then with this product, there's this app, and it's like a TikTok style swipe for you feed <laughs> of just birds that are showing up at people's houses all over the world. There's only one engagement button. It's an applause. If you like the bird, you applaud the bird. There's no negativity. There's not even other people. No moderation? 
So no it's moderation. So it's not social media. It's really it's wholesome. It is social media. What would stop you from it's TikTok for birds? <laughs> doing a musical dance in front of the bird feeder? Or way worse things. That's a great question, Andrew. <laughs> it, what would stop you is that it actually has really good. Let's start content moderation. Vision. What if I dressed as a bird? <laughs> <laughs> it's good Damn. enough to know like what people are and to not show people and okay. what's really funny is that it'll publish other animals that'll show up so it'll be like oh there's a robin oh there's like a parrot from someone squirrel. in the tropics squirrel yeah it's <laughs> like a squirrel like right against the camera <laughs> he told me about this a couple weeks ago and i want it so bad we should what's get a bird such buddies a good content idea. moderation policy? this sounds like a social <laughs> this sounds like a social media app that you would make up for a trivia question I know, like, <laughs> but it's real. But I, I, I guess I believe it's you. Real. And it's solar no, it's powered really too, oh. so you never have to charge your birdhouse. It's only a photo or a video. It's a video. Okay, it's video, right? Oh, it's okay. a video. Yeah, and mm, it's a good wow. video. You know, Twitter. I need to get my father-in-law. The name Twitter is available is now. So is it available? Well, no. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's <laughs> not being. I'm, not, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying it's not being used. Don't get rid of the name Bird Buddy quite yet. Yeah, I'm just saying but, it's not you know. being used. <laughs> You know, okay, before I round this out, you know what is a was a great social media app that I really like? What? Strava. I love running Strava. Yeah, biking. But you know what's weird about Strava? Biking. I have like a hundred followers and I don't know any of them. That's same. I and this weird thing happened where I signed up for Strava uh -huh. and I just like I guess reserved the MKBHC username and then the next morning I woke up to like a couple hundred and I'm like what what do you yeah why yeah because it's literally just going to gps tag yeah. where i am yeah you, you can, can like that. turn it off yeah. or you can also like hide your start and end points so they know yeah. generally where you are anyway it's like yeah i went on this i went on a run on sunday and i had like 20 people give me kudos on my run and i don't know any of them well but nice. i do like checking in and seeing like when and where adam ran and then i can be like we ran the same amount I don't know. That's he just texts me. He's like, look behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's healthy social media besides the stalking part of Strava. But the rest of it, I think it's pretty healthy. Fair. So. I like the bird one. <laughs> yeah, I like the bird one too. You should get one. You live, I, you got you got the house for it. Bird app. What are they called? Bird buddies. Bird buddies. Bird app. If you want to send us some, I'll definitely use it. <laughs> the logo should be a Twitter logo. <laughs> it's uh, available. <laughs> Hey, we should take a quick break. Okay. <laughs> and we should do trivia. Oh, yeah. I hope this is bird-related trivia or or Nikon-related trivia. Avian. Or both. Or Lots both. of people take bird photos with Nikon. That's a great that point. Actually, I would argue that most bird photos are <laughs> yeah. taken with Nikon. That's absolutely true. Okay, yeah. I will say concert photographers and nature photographers always Nikon. I do always see people at parks hmm. with Nikons and lenses that are taller than they are. Yeah, yes. I was they're, always, <laughs> they're always 600 millimeter lenses every time. But then when it gets to sports, they go back to Canon. Really? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of Nikon sports I think there used to be, but there's now, a lot of Canon. I bet Canon's taken over I feel recently. like the 1DX was like the yeah. Olympics camera. Yeah. Anyway, it's not a bird question, but it is oh. a Nikon question. Oh God, I'm going to fail. Earlier this episode, we talked about Nikon's camera business being smaller than we expected, but they are actually the second largest manufacturer of a device called a stepper. A stepper is an essential piece of equipment for manufacturing what? Ouch, Ellis. No. Hint, it's in all of your phones. Uh, and it's not a camera. It's not a camera. What else is it not? <laughs> it's not it's not a birdhouse that watches your birds. It's not a part of a camera. Uh they're in cameras. The thing it makes is in a camera. It's a stepper. Oh, I know the answer. Wow. Oh, I know the answer. Look That's at you. crazy. Oh, wow. Way to go. Okay, sure. wait, let me write that down. Okay. Hey, sure. I don't want to forget. Stepper. But they're gonna think about it too, and the answers will be at the end, like usual. We'll be right back. Is it patented? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Okay, so Visible Wireless is one of our partners and they're pretty great. They asked me to talk about why Visible might not be interesting for you. Pretty refreshing, right? So Visible's base plan with unlimited 5G data on Verizon's network for 25 bucks a month works great for lots of people, so what's not to love? Well, they're all digital, so you do everything from managing your plan to getting customer service right in their app. 
So if you love to handle everything without ever needing to talk to a human in a store, Visible's great. But if you need to shop for a new phone in person, Visible probably isn't for you. Someone like Verizon might be a better choice. If you want your wireless bundled with a bunch of extra stuff, don't switch to Visible. But heads up, you're gonna have to pay for that extra stuff. Visible is focused on the wireless part of wireless. So if you want more than unlimited 5G data from your wireless plan and to pay top dollar for it, then by all means, don't switch to Visible. Don't even go to visible.com to learn more. You get it. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see visible.com. Okay, welcome back. We are going to talk about selling your Cybertruck. Hmm. Time. Already. 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 Okay. So we had our first case of somebody getting punished by selling their Cybertruck, or so be it. We'll we'll get back to that later in the story. But if you're unaware, Tesla has a kind of confusing stipulation about purchasing a Cybertruck right now, where if you remember back when the F-150 first came out, there was this clause in it that you couldn't sell it for a year. Do you remember the that? The Lightning. Yeah. The Lightning. Yeah, sorry, the F-150 Lightning. And that whole thing stemmed from essentially people wanted it and they were going to resell it. So in order to combat reselling, dealerships were marking it up horribly. And then that got in the press and that was terrible. So then Ford was like, if we put this no selling for one year clause, maybe dealerships will not mark it up as bad. That didn't work at all. They still marked it up. But that was the idea behind it. And people weren't very happy about this. I just bought something. I should be able to do whatever I want with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then now Tesla, the reason they're doing something very similar. Um, the reason it's a little more confusing is because when you were first placing orders, this clause was there. Then they removed it. Now it's back in. Mm -hmm. So if you are buying a Cybertruck right now, pretty much you cannot sell it within the first year. Um, if you try to sell it within that first year, you can ask Tesla for approval to resell it. Um, and if they approve it, they get first dibs at buying it um, at oh. the final price sheet plus 25 cents per mile, reasonable wear and tear. Minus and the, 25 cents Minus per 25, mile. yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, minus 25 cents per mile, reasonable wear and tear, and the cost to repair the vehicle to Tesla's standards. If they approve you but decline to buy it, then you can resell it. But if you breach the terms, they, Tesla says they can seek injunctive relief to prevent the transfer of the title of the vehicle or demand liquidated damages from you in the amount of $50,000 or the value received as consideration for the sale or transfer, whichever is greater. They'll just take your money if you sell it? It sounds like they're trying to get either the amount of money you made on top of it or $50,000. Just wait if the they year. Resell it. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to make, I assume, a consequence that's high enough to where it's going to prevent people from reselling. I feel like people could still, if they just like didn't really drive it for a year, could still flip it in a year for more. Well, the thing it. about the Cybertruck is it is currently extremely rare. Yeah. And they're aiming for it to be mass produced. So in the window between now and when it is mass produced is when you can make the most money mm -hmm. flipping yeah. in. So as of right now, we just took delivery of Cybertruck. It's very, very hard to get a Cybertruck. And there are a very, very small number of auctions of people actually like selling Cybertrucks. And they're going for two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 because it's almost impossible mm -hmm. to get one otherwise. Mm. Super, super high demand, super low supply. When supply mm. matches demand, nobody can sell these things for over sticker anymore. So everyone who get, gets one is like a little bit tempted, like, oh, I have this super rare thing. I kind of would like to flip it. But everyone hates flipping and flippers. And so in order to Agreed. combat flippers, this is the thing that Tesla's decided to do, which is just make it against the rules to flip it. Yeah. Um, but then the other half of that is, yeah, I own it. I should be able to do whatever yeah. I want. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to spend 300 grand for it, I should be able to yeah. just let them do it. So, yeah, it is kind of a weird place that they're in. Uh, I don't it know is. if there's a much better idea, though. No, yeah, I mean, and this, when the the Ford F-150 Lightning happened, it was similar. People were flipping them, dealerships were marking them up. This was their attempt at combating it. They did a similar thing where you're not supposed to sell it for one year. I don't yeah. know what their punishments were. If we remember the Hummer EV, people were reselling that. There was no clause like this, but... Didn't we meet someone who's like, I bought it, drove it for two weeks, and then made like $40,000 on yeah. selling it? and to people, that's totally worthy. Here's the thing about this, though. Uh, there's one more piece in the agreement as well after what you read, which is Tesla can also blacklist you from ever buying another Tesla ever again. Perfect. 
yeah. the thing about people who buy Cybertrucks is they love Tesla, uh -huh. especially in this early stage. So they really want to be able to get the Roadster and whatever future Cybertruck, whatever they're going to buy. So they really don't want to take the risk. So did you see Doug DeMiro's video? No, I ago? have that in here that's saying he... So he wants to review the Cybertruck. And the way he wants to operate is, you know, cars and bids. He has this website where you can sell cars. So typically his method is when he reviews a car, he reviews a car that's literally going to be sold on cars and bids. Okay. So if he reviews the new Lamborghini Storado, it's because that one is being sold. And here's the listing. You can buy the car he just reviewed. So his strategy is, okay, I'm not going to review a Cybertruck until I get one listed on cars and bids. But the thing about the Cybertruck is you can't sell it for a year. So everyone who's thinking about selling it i mean you should watch this video it's really interesting but like they're like can you like hide the vin number and like make sure tesla doesn't know that it's me and like m maybe my username is like not my name so hopefully tesla doesn't find out and kind of like these skittish sellers like thinking maybe i'll sell it and then backing out like never mind i sold someone else a private party never mind i'm not going to do it so he hasn't been able to get his hands on one mm -hmm. i'm sure he will soon but the 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 blacklisting part is is what I think is getting to people is they want to keep getting tested. Well, and so that's what we see here is we have the first case of that happening. Um, yeah. Somebody posted on the Tesla Cybertruck Owners Club forum that uh, moving forward, any future orders placed by you will be canceled without a refund of the $100 reservation or the $250 order fee as official notification has been provided to you regarding this matter. So this person well, had a Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. They I don't know what they said. They were just feeling it out on selling it, and it was up on Car Gurus with the VIN number, which is where I don't know if Car Gurus just finds local sales and puts it all up there. Mm -hmm. But he had it listed for two hundred forty-two thousand and sixty-nine dollars. So it was two four twenty sixty-nine. Sure. So like kind of memey, I guess. But he also claims there were like twenty other Cybertruck listings on Car Gurus, but. He did have two other Cybertrucks reserved that got canceled, and he did get the reservation fees back for that because that was before they told him any future ones will be canceled without being refunded. Mm. So he did get that back, and I'm assuming he's not facing this $50,000 because it never actually sold. Mm. So he didn't actually sell it, but now someone oh. who has two other Cybertruck reservations are now canceled. Yeah, and that's I. so before I took delivery, I read the agreement. It's mm -hmm. literally if, if Tesla thinks you're thinking about selling it. What? Yeah, if you list it anywhere, if you like scout buyers, like that's enough for them to wow. totally blacklist you. I totally think even though he's just like memeing around and I think it's kind of funny that he memed a little too close to the sun and got it. <laughs> I think his excuse is his memeing around, but he had one and he was like, I wonder if I could sell it. Let's see who bites. Yeah. That's enough for if Tesla. If they bought, they would, yeah, for sure. I don't, I think this breaks the agreement for yeah, sure. Whether 100%. or not you agree about the agreement, this breaks the agreement. Yeah. But yeah, we did see an actual guy get blacklisted now because he... Yeah, he put it up for a meme. So that's, that's the president. So now everyone else who thought that maybe they could get away with it is now like, mm, maybe I don't want to publicly flip this or list it on a site that Tesla could find it. Even if you like change hands in the app, Tesla can find out like they obviously your app is your, attached to your account. So, yeah, there's a lot of and a lot of that going on. If you sell privately, the VIN number gets transferred in the reservation or the registration, right? Mm -hmm. So like they, they find out. They could figure that out no matter, like, yeah. you would have to basically be like, I'm selling this to you, but it's going to stay under my name for a year, yeah, which seems and it's gonna stay sketch, in my app. Yeah. super, super sketchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a ton of backlash when Ford tried to do this, but I think it was more around Ford dealerships having, like, really terrible markup prices and being yeah. in the bad spotlight. I guess, I guess my take is as much as I hate flipping... If you're a company that doesn't have dealerships, this is probably the most effective way to prevent flipping. I can't think of any other way. And this is new to Cybertruck, and maybe there's like some image that they're trying to uphold, but, but with the Cybertruck specifically, but like lots of other companies do things just like this. Ford GT, all of Ferrari, yeah. uh, Porsche does this with like their high end GT cars. Like they don't want you to flip it, but a lot of those also have dealerships, which will sell you the car plus a markup, which is basically what you would have to pay if you were buying a flipped one. So there, it's so, weird. Yes. So yeah, with, with Tesla, you can only buy one for sticker, period, which I guess is a good thing, but then you can't flip it. Yeah, I, I totally get the argument of like, I own it, I shouldn't be able to do it. I hate flipping though, like with a passion and yeah. 
I would like to see it stop. I wish people just didn't solely do this so people who just want to enjoy something can enjoy it for the real price and not have to pay a lot. But That's what I was going to say. I don't totally hate the the clause. I mean, yeah. I don't like to Yeah, I can't think of it better. Yeah, I just I just dislike flipping so much. I think when Ford did it, I was like I didn't really love it, but I thought it was a necessary attempt or like an attempt and I didn't mind it that much, but... Did you see what the Ford GT story was? No. Back in the day? So they made a new Ford GT, which is like this half-million-dollar supercar. And in order to even buy one, you had to be invited by Ford. So that, first of all, was like, almost no one's going to even get a chance to buy one of these special cars. But in the off chance that you are such a high-on-the-list Ford VIP, they'll let you buy one, but you're not allowed to sell it for, I think, a year or something. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a famous story about, like, John Cena getting invited to buy one, and he's like, all right, awesome, great, and he buys it, and he can't fit in it, and he's like, well, I need to sell it now. And they didn't want to let him sell it, and it was a whole story. It was a whole thing. Wow. So anytime a company tries to prevent you from selling a thing that you own, it feels wrong because you own it. Of course, you should be able to sell your property. But yeah, that's a, it's been a car thing for a long time. Maybe I'm a we, fan of it. I think it's a great maybe, idea. Maybe we should just all buy things that we need <laughs> and let people buy things at regular price. I don't know. I hate flipping so much. Well, how so do you feel much. about dealership markups? I hate dealership markups that's basically also. Flipping. I think that's a little different, though, because a dealership markup, I don't know the ins and out of it, but, like, it's a whole company running on things. And, like, to I, me, it's you just could as kind bad of say flipping. this. I, feel like it's I don't like think it's thing. just as bad as flipping. It is. is it? I think it is. I mean, you go to the grocery store and you buy a box of cereal that they're paying a lesser price for. <laughs> right, exactly. but that has an <laughs> MSRP. Yeah. So that has a manufacturer-suggested retail price. And the, you know going in that the grocery store paid wholesale and you're paying MSRP. And the sticker price guess, is the sticker I price. I guess like there's mark markup markups. Like we're talking like egregious markups. Oh, at yeah. It. Okay, yeah. yeah. Agreed. That's bullshit. Like, there's but there's always going to be some sort of a like yeah. delivery fee and some stupid fees at a dealership, which is... I don't like them, but I don't think they're yeah. as bad as flipping. I'll try but. to find the link. There's a YouTuber who did like a whole three-part series talking about what it's like to try to buy a Porsche 911 GT3 RS right now. It is basically impossible to buy one at sticker. There's only two ways to get one. One is if you are a Porsche VIP, and the other is buying one like third party with a huge markup because they flipped it. Mm -hmm. But the thing about becoming a Porsche VIP is the only way to do that is to buy a bunch of other cars from that specific Porsche dealership over time so that you spent so much money with them and then sold the cars back to them for a loss that you basically have lost the amount of money that you would have Can't made if you that. flipped the car. So let's say it's a $200,000 car. You need to buy a million dollars worth of cars and sell them all back to that dealership and lose $100,000 so that you can buy that car for sticker. So you basically paid $300,000 even though it's a $200,000 sticker. That makes sense? It's so very... the dealerships get their money out of this super rare car. Yeah. And that's kind of the wow. way. I dislike dealerships a lot. I'm, oh, I same. want to make that clear. There's, yeah. yeah. And some of the insane markups we've seen lately are really stupid and... Yeah dealerships i would rather do direct to consumer on everything 100%. with an msrp i also yeah. feel like it's a little different with like cars like that though like those supercars that are selling for that amount of money it's almost like predatory behavior and tesla isn't really like they're trying to be more about the common person selling to people this that car actually is, want it. i agree this car sticker is only 2.5 x the tesla mm -hmm. which is like yeah, it's a, it's expensive. It's a supercar, but it's not like a it's not like a Ford GT or like exactly. a million dollar oh, the, car. The Porsche. Yeah. How much is the MSRP? The Porsche it might be two fifty sticker. Okay. But the only way to get one new today would be to spend literally four hundred thousand dollars on a on a flipped one, Ugh. or to somehow become. I mean, this guy in his YouTube series gets on the phone and they're like, "Yeah, you can buy three Porsche Taycans right now, <laughs> and we'll give it to you for sticker." No. <laughs> That's Here, actually what they offer. Here's a question, and it might not be exactly like you might not be able to tell this easily, but is mm -hmm. there are these people straight up buying and flipping, or are they buying and it's just appreciating after they've actually used it for a while? Technically, yes, both. Okay. Like this is a car that is so rare that the only way to get one is to pay way over sticker because it's hard to get. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's not like buy it garage immediately start trying to sell it. 
No, or people I'm sure are doing, people are doing. Yeah, okay. that's what people are doing. That and I they're getting like blacklisted because okay. Porsche hates that. So, yeah. you know, the bodega is uh, the entire business model of the bodega is to flip grocery store products for a much higher margin. For just for pure convenience. Yeah. Because they're open like almost 24, like I have a bunch of around me, they're open 24 seven. But if I go to the cheap grocery store, that's only open until 8 PM, I can buy a box of Honey Nut Cheerios for 250. If I go to the bodega, it's $7. And yeah, they but usually have a cat. But they're not flipping it. Like they're also buying from distributors just in lower quantities. So they have narrower margins. Mm. And I don't know if they are. No, no. The bodega guy is not going to the grocery store <laughs> Buy. Like filling disagree. up disagree I've seen I, it happen I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're our doing our guy's going to Costco you, and yeah, just reselling that I'm <laughs> doing that yeah. no, no, no. Gro- I can confirm like bodegas use proper uh, distribution channels probably not every Might depend okay, maybe not everyone but I don't know I think there's other reasons the bodega margins are well their available. margins are high because it's convenience like they, they charge higher prices because of convenience and they have less volume even if they buy from the distributor you could say that that's flipping right because it's above MSRP isn't that the same thing? No, as because you're not saying. taking supply out of the general pool for yeah, consumers. That's, mm. that's what I, yeah, I get the difference yeah. now. Uh, the, my least favorite thing Unless is like- it's two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the then you are the supply. Yeah. Yeah. Then, find, people who find like really good sales where someone who maybe has been looking for a product and it's like, oh, I couldn't afford that. Now it's on sale. I'd love to grab that. And someone buys all of it and then sells it for like its normal price on Amazon mm. and flips mm. it for like that- infuriates me yeah, yeah. there's a whole it's, shoe conversation in there too uh, yeah that's yeah. i i hear you guys like talk and alex i'll talk about that all the time is like you just you get lucky enough you win the sneakers app thing you never even expect to wear it sell it immediately because when you that win i've never done this yeah. but when you win you get to buy it at sticker right yeah like just msrp i believe and so. that's the lottery ticket to like buy it at sticker and then immediately turn around and sell it for way more than sticker because very few people you have can it. go like on ebay immediately after I, really impressive shoe drops and uh, you'll just see like screenshots of got them yep. and it's like you, i'm getting yeah, them. Guaranteed, I am a flipper. Yeah, guaranteed sale yeah. yeah it happens with every new product if like the when the um was that little new Game Boy thing that the came out? Playdate? The limited edition, not the plate at the, uh, uh, the analog, analog, analog yeah. pocket. They do limited edition drops all the time of different colors. And if you go on eBay, it's always like uh gar- like guaranteed pre order, like locked in pre order, and they sell it for like over the amount that they bought it for. Yeah. Yeah. Keyboards do it a ton. Garrett from Omnitype was telling me how they only made five hundred of the Bauer two, and he said immediately after the raffle went out, because eight thousand people applied. Like half of them were on sale. Do you think for if like someone triple like the price. It, do you think if someone like that said, "If I find out you flipped my keyboard, I will never let you buy one of my keyboards again," do you think that that would work? I have no idea. I think most people flipping those things aren't mm-hmm. that interested in the keyboard anymore, yeah, and they just, just made their money. money. That's why I think some of these Cybertruck people, the fifty thousand dollar fine is more in there to be like, "Well, we'll come after you for for whatever you make. whatever." Because yeah. if it's just like we'll blacklist you, I'm sure there's They're people like, who will just be like. Did I get in the res? It's a hundred dollar refundable reservation. Yeah. Why not take that gamble of trying to yeah. make some money? But you can never flip another Tesla again. Yeah, bro. If you can make like fifty thousand dollars off of literally nothing, yeah, a hundred dollar like for a lot of people, it's worth it. Five year gamble, but yeah. <laughs> your salary just like boom. Yeah, yeah. somehow fair. every tech story comes back to Taylor Swift. But didn't Taylor <laughs> Swift do this with her ticket sales? Where like if you tried to get a ticket for the tour, you had to like answer questions that only fans would know or something Bro, like you, that. You no. had to buy merch. Uh, you had to what? buy like X dollars of for not the most recent tour for n- two tours ago. Okay. Before her and Ticketmaster were were angry at each other back when they were still homies. <laughs> There was a thing where, like, before the tour got announced, she did a merch drop, and then everyone who bought X dollars worth of merch got the link first to buy tickets to the tour. That kind of reminds me, I think Tesla's literally doing that with stockholders. In in Taylor's defense, she has, like, the craziest scalper problem in the world. Like, like, It's wild. Yeah. The stockholder thing just got announced this morning, right? Yeah, or yesterday. uh, uh, Literally, Tesla's giving early dibs on Cybertruck deliveries to people who have owned the stock for a certain amount of time or something. Oh, yeah. It was like before a certain date. If yeah. you owned it before a certain date, you were able to. So kind of similar to Taylor Swift. Like, oh, oh, you've been a fan for a while, huh? Okay. Yeah, you'll get first dibs. You probably aren't going to flip it. You probably actually will like and enjoy. That's the thing is they just want you to own and enjoy the thing instead of flipping it. That's maybe a good filter for them. Yeah. That's funny. 
Early Cybertruck delivery for verified long-term Tesla shareholders. If you're an eligible long-term Tesla holder and you made a Cybertruck reservation prior to March 1st, 2024, you can get your Foundation Series Cybertruck early. Hmm. That's only so like... Loopholes and you need through. 500 shares. That's so confusing. But people have had <laughs> really? reservations for like four years at this point, right? So someone who has a lot of stock... don't have any stock. <laughs> and only made the reservation a month ago, not even two weeks ago... Can, can get up can and skip the I mean, there's other requirements. There's like five of them, I think, but that's like the, the gist of it. You have to have 500 stocks. I almost, yeah, so I guess Tesla's problem is they have a giant list of 3 million people, and they're trying to decide who should get the cars first when they know that hidden within these 3 million people is lots of flippers. Man. So how do we filter through, hopefully in chronological order, how to deliver these trucks to people who will not flip it? Somebody with 500 shares is going to get their early Cybertruck, sell their shares, sell their Cybertruck, and just retire. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have ha you have to have at least $85,500 worth of Tesla stock yeah. to, to be able to be eligible for Oh, this. that's a fan. That's well, they could have gotten that way less, but that means they also yeah, have, have made that shares. much money yet. Wow. Yeah. I could see Tesla eventually just doing the Ticketmaster throw in the towel and just be like, <laughs> we know you're going to flip these trucks. We're going to create a platform a pl <laughs> for you to flip them or we can take a cut. That's you damn. Know, yeah. Because it's like, I mean, Tesla X Tesla Live Tesla Nation. <laughs> it's sad. Like when Ticketmaster started doing that, I was like, this is the worst possible solution but i i i don't have any better ones you know like how do you because i'm with you andrea it's like if you're gonna buy something just own it you yeah know what i mean like don't it. take it away from someone who would that's, really want it yeah that's what makes me the most mad is it's taking it away from someone who would have actually like enjoyed yeah. it well the it's bodegas sad. you know <laughs> but it's okay with the bodegas because there's a cat there it helps a lot <laughs> yeah. i will tell you that it helps a lot but I still am not happy paying seven dollars for some I mean, oat milk. That's just any convenience store too. Here to here I've had to do it too. Like run to a seven eleven for just like something like that and you're paying thirty percent more. I would not buy milk at a seven eleven. That's not true, Andrew. That's not true. Tell me where else you're gonna get a taquito for a dollar eighty nine. Okay. You eat thirty those? percent up from where? Oh. <laughs> Big taquito Touché. fan. I still go to seven eleven. As long as that's where cats. do they have Anyway. Taquitos every 7-Eleven no, ever. 7-Elevens. Well, that's a, pro that's a good place to take a break, I think. we got a bunch more to talk about with Spotify and with TikTok. So mm. let us take that break, and let's also do a trip. Do some trivia. Yeah. You didn't do that the first time around. Yeah, yeah you no. messed up. Threw a, no, no, no. He's well, it's variable. You yeah, never know. Just keeping you on your toes. Uh, in trivia. You're not awake. <laughs> So that was a whole section about cars. So and we beds. got a we got a car question. I don't like. Oh boy. Cars. In 1902. <laughs> no, it's not a car question. <laughs> there were 909 new automobiles registered in the United States. 485 of which, that's more than half, were powered by what now uncommon propulsion technology? The MediaTek oh. Dimensity 9000. <laughs> Pro. Pro. <laughs> I actually have a guess on that one. Wait. Powered by the what? Powered by what now uncommon propulsion technology? Uncommon. Mm -hmm. I think it's, is it growing in commonality? Well-worded question. I'm not. I plead the fifth. <laughs> we'll think about it, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. If you're like me and you have never used TikTok in your life, well, are you in for a treat? Whoa. Because uh, TikTok... Wait, wait. Yeah. in your life? I do not have a TikTok account. But I've you've never, never even used it? I've seen TikToks in a web browser when people send me TikTok links, but I've never used the app before. That's crazy. That's like Sweet not having COVID. child. <laughs> for however What do you do? Yeah, what do you do with your time? This That's... is why I don't have the <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, yeah, okay, go on, sorry. I because I know, because Instagram already does this to my brain, right? And they've, you know, I was telling Adam this the other day. Instagram now is like 80% videos. Yeah, it's... three days after TikTok. Y yeah, sure. Yeah, but it's just, it's just, I just don't want that. I just don't want that. I don't want to get into those, like, I, I wake up, I look at my phone, and then it's 45 minutes later, and I'm like, huh, I feel like I just woke up, you know? <laughs> That's Again, what, I that's what TikTok is. Yeah, it's bad. I don't want. I don't want that anyway. I love it. So I do have Instagram. Uh, I use it like as a portfolio for my photo things, and unfortunately, it's turning into a video service now, which I don't do. But 
Well, I do, but not. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, TikTok is allegedly Uh working on an Instagram-like app, which I find hilarious because this happens in every single category of every single thing. It's the lobster. It's the what? What? It's the crab. Crab. The crab. The carcinization. Oh, yeah. Carcinization, yeah. Everything. I like how lobster yeah. we were confused, but crab we were like, oh, oh you're yeah. right. Sorry, yeah, the it's, crab. It's wait, wait, can of, you explain it for people that oh, don't yeah. know what the crab situation yeah. is? So every evolution, is it ever like evolution always turns things into crabs? <laughs> is that the idea? Uh, that's it what is, I vaguely is, remember it, it as. All roads point to crab evolution. <laughs> we're all <laughs> crawling towards crab. Like, like TikTok a, added... Longer videos and then longer videos it's, and then now it's just like full length videos, just like YouTube. Yeah. While YouTube added shorts. Yeah. And it's just like you guys are doing this. Yeah. T- towards the crab. Yeah. Towards S- the crab. Same with Instagram. Okay. Instagram has been adding. They added reels and yep. now it's like TikTok, TikTok, and then all of their content is moving towards TikTok. And it's it I, it reminds me of the we use the the Meta Ray Ban glasses versus the Oculus Quest uh, video that we did where they're sort yeah. of. They're racing towards each other, and like whichever one wins first is going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing. It's like, well, Instagram is trying to copy TikTok. TikTok's kind of trying to copy Instagram. But now TikTok's really trying to copy Instagram by just making an Instagram app. Hmm. Because I think that they're trying to take advantage of this hole in the market where all of these actual like photographer people <laughs> who just want to see photos and are really annoyed at the fact that you cannot turn off like these videos on Instagram are complaining constantly about how there's no just like video feed version of Instagram anymore. And I think TikTok- Photo feed? Yeah, photo, sorry, photo They just feed. want straight photos. Yeah, I just want straight photos. Yeah. Because I don't want to wake up 25 minutes after looking at my Instagram app and realize that I've been watching re- reels, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, theoretically, somebody found in an APK breakdown of TikTok, they found a bunch of code references to TikTok photos which also referenced reaching other like-minded people who enjoy photo posts, um, which is a very, you know, marketing way to talk to photographers. Uh, And it also references syncing posts to TikTok photos, which I assume means it's going to be photo-focused but has TikToks in it, sort of how Instagram is theoretically supposed to be photo-focused with reels in it. Mm -hmm. We'll also see if that happens because right now we're in the midst of the U.S. attempting to ban TikTok. Yeah. Um, which, again. Hmm? again. Again. Oh, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, again, it's been brought up before. It didn't happen. Um, it's almost impossible to talk about this without getting into super politics, so we prefer not to do that. But it ultimately feels like the goal is less of a full ban and more of it to be owned by a U.S.-based company. And I think this morning they actually passed a bill in the House yeah. to push it forward. So who knows what's going to happen with TikTok, even by the time this video comes out. Yeah. Biden said he would sign the bill if it got passed in the House and Senate. It got passed in the House, so now it has to pass in the Senate. There's like a low chance it will pass in the Senate. I have no idea. Yeah. There's theoretically a low chance it would pass in the Senate. If it did, though, uh, they would basically try to force TikTok to sell it to like a Away from ByteDance. Away from ByteDance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway... Yeah, so the idea of, of of TikTok working on an Instagram app really frustrates me because I don't. It's sort of like the. It feels exactly like the Twitter blue sky threads thing, where now I I feel like compelled to post the same content on every single social media platform just so I can get it out there. Mm. Like when I when I published my X one hundred six video, I like put it on Twitter and I was like, cool, and I was like, oh, I should really put this on Threads. So I put it on Threads, and I, and then a while went by, and I was like. There's a niche group of users on Blue Sky. So I put on Blue Sky. <laughs> but I don't want to have to do that with my photo posts, too. You know, yeah. and I also don't want a TikTok account. And I feel like this is going to push me to get a TikTok account. This but might be time. You don't have to. I don't have to. David, but I what also... if TikTok photos allows for super panoramas in high res quality? Okay. He's in. I have a, <laughs> I have a small <laughs> short story. I bought a new camera in Japan. <laughs> That was not the Nikon. I bought two new cameras. <laughs> bought the Nikon FM2 Titanium. Uh-huh. Do you guys remember how I made the video on the 6x17 camera? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The 3D printed one? Yep. I bought a 6x24 what? camera. It's just going to be like a string <laughs> of spaghetti by the end. Like how yeah. this is the widest, narrowest. It's 4 by one stock ticker. So the 6x17 <laughs> is about 2.9 to 1. This is 4 to 1. Nice. 4 to 1. Yeah. Don't tell Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to show these on the internet. Your role is just like your eyes yeah. and like everything around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. So, um, anyway, yeah, I, it, that was just a small aside. I have no idea how I'm going to show them on the internet. Instagram, I always have to, you have to fit it in a, in a square. So I always use the white box and mm-hmm. people hate that. But for threads, they natively let you do panoramas. Um, it just shows up on the whole thing. But that's what I'm saying. What if TikTok Photos is like a great photos app? Would you not want to use it just because it's better at doing these things? No, I'd probably use it. That's what I'm saying. Competition well sign is up good, now. David. It is. Yeah, I, competition is good, and Instagram doesn't have competition. And also, like, I don't see why all of these social media companies wouldn't just try and basically steal other things when Instagram essentially took everything from Snapchat and yeah is like thriving in it now yeah, and tiktok don't love it but yeah it's working for them so why would they ever stop instagram is snapchat instagram is youtube instagram, instagram is, is TikTok. tiktok yeah instagram is instagram wait can i you can't pause a reel in instagram you can. right you, hold you it. can am i the other way around you hold it you can pause, you can pause it in every app TikTok, you, p- Am you I that tap dumb? it. It <laughs> no, mutes, no, 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 Andrew, it mutes nah, though. No, 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 no. no, tap it, mutes it. Hold it, pauses it. I thought Holding it pauses it. I think yeah. so. Wait, should I? I'll try It right should now. say that somewhere. It just keeps muting for me. <laughs> tap it. I'm fine being an idiot here. No, you're not, you got a kid. You got other stuff to worry about. I don't like that you like have to I'm, hold it. It's frustrating. Oh, when it's in the feed? Yeah, yeah then like right holding here. it doesn't do anything. But once you're there, holding it pauses it. So you have to like jump into the carousel. Okay, so once it comes here, then that just mutes it, unmutes it. Yeah, I did not know that. Holding is a. I hope there's one other person who (laughs) does not know that. Holding is a terrible UX decision because it's invisible. No, because well already, but it's it's more a terrible decision because you have to keep. Yeah, what if you want to pause it because you have to go do something Uh, and then. Then it's, it's or, a 60 second video. Just watch it again, bro. That's or if you want to take lot. a screenshot of it to like send to your friend, you have to be you have to do this like weird like finagled thing where you like press power and I agree with David. hold it at the same time. It's very difficult. You should try TikTok. True. You can just pause it. I Damn. want <laughs> to keep my life. Are you downloading TikTok on your no. computer right now? No. Here, I'll sign up with your username right now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, speaking of uh, crabs. Um. <laughs> No, this works, guys. Trust me. Good. Okay. Spotify. Are you sure? Oh, no, fair. Spotify like adding rate. music videos. Yeah. So they're becoming YouTube. <laughs> sort of. Kind of. Is that what's happening? I just wanted to quickly talk about this. So Spotify is adding music videos for premium users. It's rolling out in a bunch of different countries, none of them the US, UK, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Brazil, Colombia, Philippines, Indonesia, and Kenya. If you play a song that has an associated music video, there will be a button that says switch to video. You can watch it full screen in landscape. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is different than these like weird loops that we have in Spotify right now. Like the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to bring this up because it really feels like all the weird features we've covered that we've never liked over the past two years all just seem to be like, hey, I want you to look at our app. Yeah. Because Spotify is definitely the app that I use a lot and never am inside of the app. Yeah, background. That's a good point. Right? So yeah, Sp- huh. yeah. Spotify's algorithm's really solid, so I can play one song at the start of my car ride and it'll just play music that I'm interested in till the rest. I mm-hmm. never look at the app again. It is never open for more than a minute. Yeah. So all of these things are very, remember the old Tic Tac scrolling thing? It all felt like it was trying to get you inside of the app. Do they have ads yeah. inside Spotify? Besides audio, I'm a premium, premium user, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm a premium yeah. user. What's the point of keeping you in the app if you're listening to it anyway? Don't know. Sell don't ads, know. sell visual ads, maybe Maybe. sell scrolling data of Ooh. like what you scroll on. Could be. It could be. I guess like outside of ads, is it possible that artists can pay for or like audio can pay for uh, like specific spots or like premium? Like showing like up on your page, essentially, yeah. Like integrated ads, almost. I don't know, I don't know if that's possible, but Spotify does have. I mean, it's other possible. Things. I don't know if they're doing it. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Spotify has other sections of the app, like the merchandise and the concert. The section. concert ticket one is one yeah, where like it can they be want like, you to look at it for I that, like that feature. Mm-hmm. I actually, do like that. I have feature. gone to two concerts because of that. Actually, I have found concerts because of that. Mm-hmm. So Spotify's Ticketmaster. 
It just alerts you to concerts that are happening. Oh, you don't buy it inside? No, you don't buy it. Oh, they're so close to doing it. I'm sure there's some sort of affiliation where if you click through that and like. Yeah, they probably get a. um, uh, Some. Like a kickback. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, affiliate revenue. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why they're trying to keep you in their app. I mean, every app is trying to keep you in their app. So that makes sense. But I mean, if everything wants to, if every app wants to be the everything app, they got to start somewhere. And then just expand slowly what they're good at into things that they're okay at until they get good at that too. Yeah. And then just keep branching out. So Spotify, good at audio, songs. Then they did podcasts because that's like right next mm-hmm. to the yeah. whole song thing. It's background that's audio, great. And then they started having you audio know, books. Yeah, yeah, audio books are in there. And then like there's lyrics also next to songs. And maybe if we can get you in the app a little more visually, there's like that little background video that plays with the album art. And then maybe you can get music videos if you want to watch the music video. And then suddenly you scroll and then the next music video pops up and suddenly you're scrolling. And then now we have visual ads and then they just get more and more branched out until they're TikTok. And here we are. <laughs> so they're a crap. So and then crap. TikTok adds audiobooks, <laughs> and then we all just have TikTok is adding everywhere. podcasts. Really? Really? Yeah, we I we've talked about, about it on this that, before. Oh, yeah. No. See, yeah, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. I don't know. I and just thought shopping. that was kind of interesting. And they have shopping. And they have live like shopping. TikTok shopping thing. is the worst. It is like ninety yeah. percent of my oh, videos QVC? now. Yeah. They have they had this really <laughs> no, there was a really great New York Times thing that they did where they were like, How much is TikTok pushing shopping? So they tried to have uh, one of their writers sell a mechanical pencil mm-hmm. that he just had sitting on his desk. So he set up a shopping account. Like, and it kicks you into a, like a live video feed yeah. where you like can go on and do this QVC thing. And he was like, I have this used mechanical pencil. And he had like hundreds of viewers. Jesus. Because TikTok just like juices the, the hell out That's of it. That's so funny. Trying to get people to use I mean, yeah, hundreds of viewers is pretty easy on TikTok because like- It was a brand new account for, for a mechanical pencil. I also, we do think <laughs> that new TikTok accounts get good views off the start. Or yeah. okay views off the start. But no, like- it's pretty much you can make a link to sell something on TikTok and then like you just make a video and it says like earns commission in the bottom or there's like a link to it. And so people just make dumb TikTok videos that might have this water bottle in it or something. And then you can click. So now every post is just like sponsored, earns commission, earns commission, earns commission. Mm -hmm. One kind of funny one, sponsored, earns commission. It's Mm -hmm. terrible. And that's actually a huge part of the Google circle to search integration push thing. Like all of their ads now, that show circle to search. It's always like you're watching a YouTube video. You pause it. You circle on some pro or some shirt that some person's wearing in a YouTube video, and then it brings up Google Shopping, and then you buy it. Yeah, I've seen like three Google ads that are specifically targeted towards that. Yeah, it's always like a piece of like a jacket or something. Yeah, like what's that purse? And you just circle. I want the exact same one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if Spotify just did music? Pfft, well, just then they'd idea. just be SoundCloud. Okay, so then audio. All audio. What if they just like became the YouTube of audio? I think of they got that already. Bro, you're never They're gonna 10x. Only but then, doing audio. what are the investors gonna do? <laughs> it's a publicly traded. You company, can't Adam. stop 10xing. Growth. No. <laughs> Infinite growth. growth. <laughs> Infinite, Infinite growth. growth. They're gonna be a bank next. Infinitely grow into a crab. But yeah, I ultimately it kind of feels like a bank. <laughs> Sorry, continue. that's what everything does kind of <laughs> feel like. I was just gonna say, like Spotify has a solid algorithm to just let me play music and never look at it. Is that backfiring now because they want more people inside of their app? No, no, because Spotify has a really serious financial interest in playing certain music Fair. over certain other music, and so mm-hmm. the, that's what I was thinking about this whole time. Is like, why would they want you in the app? Because Every, it seemingly every time you click through their app, you are earning them less money. Like if, if you can let them decide exactly what songs to p- uh, play for you, they can always choose the ones that have the lowest payout rates. But they can they can do over... that inside the app as well. Not if you're they, choosing a song. They though. can feed you like if it's a TikTok type like carousel. Like why mm. not feed you the music videos of the lower paying ones like that? Or that's true. Why not they start feeding you selling things that rather than paying less it makes them more money that's true and the songs that'll have music videos ready to go are the major label releases which do have the lower payouts yeah sad (laughs) it is sad (laughs) glad it's totally consumer focused it's all for us it's all a good app for us what a bummer yeah (laughs) but at least we can listen to music 
<laughs> this is true. Yay. I do use it to listen to music. That's why I only listen to old school RuneScape music. <laughs> well, speaking of listening to music, play the trivia music. Trivia. <laughs> oh. See what I did there? Ellis was on. I'm very impressed that Ellis was right Thank there. Thank you. Thank you for being on the same page. That Always. Was yeah. Always. All right. Also, just want to say I got distracted because not that literally anyone outside of this room would know this, but we had a little numbering error last week where or two weeks ago where we wrote episode 215 in our like internal docs as 216 and then we accidentally did like another episode 216 and this is 217 but i wanted to bring it up because episode 116 was my first episode was it really which means Whoa. i have done 100 waveform episodes that's wild happy hey. to be here i know isn't it crazy? time flies it really Jeez. really does Wow. Anyway, to honor my 100th episode, <laughs> this episode we talked about Nikon's camera business being smaller than expected, but they are currently the second largest manufacturer of a device called a stepper, which is an essential piece of equipment for the manufacturing of what? What do you make uh, um, with a stepper? Wait, can I have a eraser, please? An eraser? Wait, so the thing that you make is... We're a component that gets put in a phone? Yeah. We're okay. listing the thing that it makes, not like the process of how it gets made. If you name the process, I will be seriously impressed. Okay, I'm going to be wrong on this, but that's the only guess I have, and it's more of the process. Okay, that's fine. Let's see it. <laughs> We're all very different I wrote here. motor. All right, that is... That's so generic. Incorrect. Uh, so my thought process on stepper is like stepping different levels of like CNC machine. I see what you're thinking. Okay. Yeah, but CNC is wrong. Incorrect. Unfortunately, <laughs> David, you wrote. I wrote pedometer. Okay, so I see how you took the stepper. <laughs> <laughs> I see. None of us. Who was the closest? Uh, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um. The, so the full name of a stepper is a wafer stepper because it is a central piece of machinery to build chips. And uh, huh. you could have said wafer stepper, and I would have been wrong. Still, does it get put in um, the ASML lithography machines? It is the lithography machines. Wait, but ASML makes those. Uh, ASML is the largest manufacturer of them, with Nikon being the second largest. Wait, really? Let me fact check. This is real that quick. true? According to Wikipedia, hmm. I hope quick you update like on the score. Pedometer joke. Oh yeah, Marquez with four. Andrew with one, two. Carry the one, two. David, the one's doing a lot of carrying things. the one all by himself. Just one. I was in Japan. Yep. Next question. In 1902. There were 909 new automobiles registered in the United States, wow. 485 of which, that's more than half, were powered by what now uncommon propulsion technology? The power of love. Nitrogen. Is not it. <laughs> it's a curious thing. Makes one man weak and another man sing. Sure. You don't know. All the you muffin man. <laughs> <laughs> the muffin man. The muffin man. It was all right. I think we're all gonna have the Flip same answer. Yes, I know. The muffin man. Hmm. Oh, what do you guys got? <laughs> we don't all have. Marquez and I have. The I same have answer. the electric motor. Oh. Wrong. I have steam engine. Okay. I... Correct. Wow. Steam half engine. of all cars in 1902 were steam cars. That's nuts. What were the other half? I thought that made uh, perfect the, sense. The other half were gasoline. What? Um, there might have been a few experimental electric cars out there. Huh. A few years after that, the electric starter motor was finished, which made gasoline cars much easier to own than steam cars. Um, and then by the time 1920 came around, steam cars were pretty much not a thing anymore. And they all have very funny names, like Stanley Steamer and stuff. That's so Wait, good. really? <laughs> there was, the actually, cars? You know, I'm realizing there was a there was a, a Stanley Steam car company, but maybe the Stanley Steamer is separate. <laughs> I think, I think that's separate. separate. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we learned something new today about uh, about crabs, 
about cars. We live in the crowd. About Nikon. Time. About Nikon. About you TikTok. Mean, about Nikon? Spotify. Nikon. And uh, if you put all that information together in your head, surely you got something out of this podcast. Don't call me Shirley. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Catch you guys next week. Peace. Waveformers produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network and our Trapture Music is created by Vane Silk. Bingo! Uh, Let's go! Right. Lemon Pepper Stepper. All right. Lemon Pepper Stepper.